determining the degree of freedom in planar plane mechanisms or in planar mechanisms okay now let me illustrate this by the help of three diagrams i will draw three diagrams and then we will look at what happens uh, when we try and make them into a mechanism now i have two links this is link number one and this is link number two okay and the both the links have these holes in between for joining now these two links are not connected with each other so right now they are not connected so if i look at the uh, motion coordinate for both the links let us say this link is one and this link is link number two this point can have a motion in the vertical direction let us say this is uh, coordinate axis y1 and let us say this is coordinate axis x1 okay so this point can have a linear motion horizontally and can have a linear motion vertically and also this can also rotate so it will have some angular motion as well given by theta1 if you come to this point this point can also move up that is in vertically upward direction or in a horizontal direction by x2 and this can also rotate giving you an angular position of theta2 in such a configuration where they are not connected at all and each link has 3 degree of freedom the total system will have a total degree of freedom as 6 so when two links in a plane are not connected they will have 6 degrees of freedom as explained in this diagram now what I will do I will connect these two links by a joint so what I will do this is link number one okay and this is link number two and they are joined at this point okay this is a full joint now what why do we call it full joint let's see now this point can either move up in the y-axis or it can move in the horizontal direction in the x-axis so this point is also on link 2 and this point is also on link 1 so this is the common point for link 2 and 1 so both the links will move together with respect to this point okay and both can have their individual angular movements now what is happening by connecting these two links at this junction we have eliminated two degrees of freedom okay so y1 y2 x1 x2 these four have become two degrees of freedom so we have eliminated two so now for this kind of a system the degree of freedom becomes four and we have eliminated two degrees of freedom so by joining it at this joint now when a joint is eliminating two DOFs that joint is termed as a full joint okay so this is quite an important uh, term to remember because we will be uh, looking at this when we have to calculate the DOFs of some mechanism in which you will have to deal with different kind of joints so full joint is one which eliminates two DOFs now let's look at one more configuration let me give you a horizontal link like this okay and then I have a link which is just touching the horizontal link at one point okay so this is the kind of uh, connection you have this is the kind of linkage you are providing and let me name this link as one 
and this link is 2 now uh, link 1 can move in the angular direction as theta 1 and it can move in x1 direction as well and in y1 direction as well okay but link number 2 can only move in this direction horizontally it cannot move in the vertically upward direction because it is pressed on to link 1 at this point and it can rotate as well and have an angular motion in terms of theta 2 okay now in this we have eliminated just one degree of freedom not two okay so this kind of a joint is called half joint so half joint is a joint which eliminates one degree of freedom and the degree of freedom for this system is one two three four and five so this is a concept that we need to uh, remember at all times full joint eliminates two DOFs and half joint eliminates one DOF it eliminates one DOF okay now a very important concept that comes into play is that when you have a link okay and that link is fixed onto the ground okay or you can say when the link is grounded see when the link is grounded all three DOFs are eliminated because a grounded link cannot move anywhere so it will not have any degree of freedom whatsoever okay now these observations lead us to a very important criteria to find out the degree of freedom for a mechanism that criteria is known as Grubler's criteria or Grubler's condition Grubler's condition helps us to find out the degree of freedom of a plane mechanism as per the formula m is equal to 3 times l minus 2 times j minus 3 times g in which l is the number of links so as I told you all links have 3 degree of freedom attached to it j is the number of joints it is the number of joints and g is the number of grounded links or fixed links so this is a very very important equation in finding out the degree of freedoms of plane mechanisms okay